This is an advanced map guide for Heidel. If you're a beginner, I'd recommend working on your fundamentals and mechanics first, but if you're getting into comp and looking to get your game to the next level, or if you want to be a competent IGL, this is the guide for you. Before I get into anything more advanced, you need to know most pre-nades for this map. This is by far the most nade heavy map and pre-nades are a big part of it. Most teams start out each round by droning before breaking anything, so you usually have a few seconds to go for a pre-nade before retreating back to whatever position you need to play in. For bottom floor, the two best pre-nades are from storage to outside gym wall to target anyone blowing up the wall, and from garage over to the B stairs. If you notice the enemies are running a lot from safe spots, you can pre-nade pretty much anywhere marked in the green area from top floor by either breaking the door, running out and rolling it, or breaking the window and throwing it out. There aren't any worthwhile grenades in winery, so don't bother with that. The most common runouts are from laundry window and lobby. For middle floor, you can grenade this area outside garage by rolling a grenade and bouncing it off the wall. Even though this is a fairly dangerous play, most teams will try to drone first, so you have a few seconds to throw it before the drone gets in. You can also throw the grenade towards the left side in a similar manner, however it is usually much more effective to grenade from top floor. I wouldn't recommend trying to run out the door and rolling the grenade since it's too risky on this floor, but throwing a grenade from the window is still fairly safe depending on who you're up against. Try to aim around here. Some common runouts on this floor are breaking the storage door to get anyone grappled on laundry window, and this window on top floor to get anyone droning or on top of this thingy. For top floor, grenades are too dangerous to throw consistently and there's no good place to do a runout from and come back to site safely. However, if you are certain there's no one lobby, a really good runout to use is running out lobby balcony and looking towards the B balcony. You can also look towards the roof. First, let's look at the map from an enforcer's perspective. Starting with bottom floor, there's a wall and a hatch leading directly to site, and next to the site is storage, which also has a wall connected to site. And storage itself has a hatch on it as well. The name of the game in this floor is storage control. This is because if you have storage, you can blow both walls into site. The main reason why this is good is because it completely negates the revolter from playing in any angle with vision into this area that you can plant in, except for parkour. That means if you have control of storage, you can blow both walls into sight, and as long as you have either someone watching parkour, or ideally a grenade, you can easily get an extremely good post plant off. However, the main problem that arises when trying to take storage is that the entrance to storage and the hatch don't have visibility to the same angles. So what you'd commonly see is a team trying to enter storage by hot dropping hatch and entering the door at the same time. But this would usually lead to people entering from the door getting shot down by storage hallway and the hatch players not being able to do anything. This is even more of a problem if a revolter is playing somewhere here. If you have good coordination, a good alternative is making your way down these stairs instead of hot dropping down. This is a hard staircase to go to because an enemy could swing you at any moment while you're moving forwards. But if you have some piece of utility or just more than one player, then you can deal with that. Just be careful of an arcade player coming behind you. Doing it this way is much better if your goal is storage control, but still more difficult. That's why a good alternative is to simply throw a grenade or an incendiary into storage. This is a really easy nade you can throw that fully clears headpick. If you enter right after throwing this nade, your hatch players would have much less to deal with and would only have to look in one direction, and the door players would also only have to deal with storage hallway. Lastly for this site, there is also the hatch. The hatch is only really good for watching connector and clearing yellow wall, which if you find that you have trouble with people playing here, it's really good. Just keep in mind that if you want to do this and also breach the walls into B site, you'd have to get two breaching foams for a total of 5 users. I haven't really talked much about garage or middle floor in general, but as long as you drone in and send multiple people to enter, you'd be fine. Also, a quick note, while you're playing post plant, you should always have at least one player watching this area peeking off of tap and one player to watch the garage run out. For A site, it's fairly easy to gain control of winery in A hallway with a drone and a few people, but taking arcade is really difficult. That's because you can fully crouch behind this pool table and get a really nice head peek whenever you want. A defender can easily get help from water and people from A site can wall back into it as well. The only actually consistent way to take arcade is to go for middle floor and challenge him from three different angles. A grenade or an incendiary can also really help. After you take control of the rooms beside A site and blow both walls, pretty much any fight is favorable to you now. 
The only thing you really have to worry about is a bar player, but as long as you have that covered, you can get a false plant off pretty easily and hold it from almost anywhere. Just make sure that both walls are blown and never hold an angle. That's because as a revolter, if a wall is blown on A site, it's super common to just jiggle and pre-fire or even blind fire common holding spots. I like to look at middle floor as two halves, the B half and the A half. The B half has garage, laundry and the hallway connecting the two. Getting control of these areas can get you a really comfortable execute into site. And the A half is constructed of piano, theater and lobby. Which, if you have control of, A site becomes arguably the easiest site to attack in the game. For the B half, all attacks look fairly similar. Start out the round with a drone either directly into garage or from main. If garage is clear, then take it, and if it's not, then you challenge the enemies with utility. For flashes, try to bounce them from the roof and have them land on top of the van. That way anyone around the back of garage will be blind. And you can also roll grenades under the van, but I'd recommend you try to save the grenades for the site execute if you can instead. In addition to that, you can start the round by going from bottom floor and make your way upstairs to contest garage from two different angles. The reason it's better to go from the stairs rather than from main door or from skylight is because if you drop down from skylight, you would make a lot of noise and would risk getting killed by a roamer. And if you go from main door, you risk someone swinging you with tickers advantage from theater when you're out in the open. Also, you can have someone grappled on laundry window swing in so he can catch the enemies while they're trying to retreat back to site. But this poses several risks. First, it's extremely common to put trip mines on the window. Second, someone could be hiding in laundry behind the closet. Third, you could get wall banged extremely easily. And fourth, someone could run out storage and shoot you down. If someone didn't break the storage door within 10 seconds of the round starting, you can be pretty sure that it's no longer a threat. And this nade both clears the corner and breaks any trip mines that can hit you. If you send a drone through garage and have it go straight up, you can also check for trips very quickly. That's 3 out of 4 problems solved, but as for the wall banging, there's no way to go around it. If you're playing against a team that wall banks a lot, you're better off just not going to the window entirely. When you're fighting garage from outside, you never want to just hold this head peak. That's because you're currently standing in what is probably the easiest pre-fire spot in the game. Instead, you can just jiggle the angle, or even better, you can use this spot, which I personally really like. After you're taking control of garage and laundry, make sure you have at least one person watching flank from main door, but otherwise you have a really favorable side take. You can throw super easy grenades back side like so, you can throw a grenade towards AB door or connector, and if you want to add a little spice, you can always keep someone on top floor who can also nade connector or even just drop down. In addition to that, you can also very easily smoke off connector and AB door with the same way you throw the grenades. Also, the best plant spot is right here, because you can see it from outside the window and you can blow the hatch below it. But you're not forced to put all of your players into the same side. You can have one player start the round by droning into lobby and checking if there's a door blocker on A side. If there is, the drone can make its way into theater and check if there's a door blocker there. If there isn't a door blocker in one of those entrances, then you can wait until your teammates made some noise over in garage and crouch walk all the way into connector. You can also go through AB door, but that's less effective since you have less cover and you don't have vision into as many angles as connector does. Also, try to keep a cloak on you so you can draw proximities as well. For the A half, it's a very similar story. Drone in, contest the space with utility, and then blow the walls into sight. The thing about A sight is that it's an extremely difficult site to defend. If both walls are blown, the only spaces a defender can play in that aren't in the middle of the open are connector, AB door, and if you want to count it, then this table as well. That's why you shouldn't try to do anything too fancy and just take fights. The two best spots to plant are anywhere you can see from this window and also in this corner since you can deny the plant from outside. For top floor, let's start by taking lobby control. Before the round begins, have someone on the hatch and someone on the window. Then, when you drone in, start by droning the middle floor. Go into middle floor A site, then just clear this corner in theater. After that, go into lobby and clear the lobby boxes. And then, you have enough battery left to come back down into middle floor. The reason this is so effective is that as a roamer on middle floor, people would commonly start out in piano, theater or kitchen. And then, after they hear the drone leave them, they'd start moving towards lobby. But since you came back with the drone, you can catch them while they're moving, which can pressure them to retreat to skylight, which you can easily punish them for, or try to fight your team regardless. Of course, you're not always guaranteed to find them, which is why you still need to be very wary of middle floor during your site execute. 
After you've taken lobby control, make sure to keep either one person outside of lobby balcony or lobby boxes to watch bedroom. You do not want to hold bedroom from hatch because the revolter can easily run past you and destroy your entire team during the final match of Challenger Cup and send your entire team home crying without a final escape. Last note for lobby is that no matter what, always have your gun up and ready to fight someone swinging the A door. If you ever need to reload or recenter your play space, get behind cover first. It's extremely common for people to just swing this door, especially when they hear the wall being foamed. For the actual site execute, it's always good to use a smoke right here so you can block headpeak, toilet and connector in one go. It's also really easy to nade both headpeak and toilet without trouble. Then all you need to do is fake a plant a few times and you have a really nice post plant that you can see from outside. Also, to fake plant you don't actually have to put the EMP on the wall, you can just press the trigger and they can hear that. For B site, the two areas connected to it are bedroom and master hallway. First, I'll note that revolters rarely play in bedroom, just due to it being pretty much impossible to retreat from it. If you want to go towards master hallway, you can get shot down by bedroom balcony from the door or by this window in master hallway, and if you want to go back towards B site or lobby, then you can very easily get shot down from the hatch. So it's extremely easy to take control of bedroom. The problem comes after that. Once you blow the wall towards site, revolters will still have a lot of cover to hide behind and can easily get favorable gunfights as well as deny plant. If you think the revolters are going to stack A site, then you can try to get an incendiary to throw towards the master hallway door and then go for a quick plant in this cubby, but even then a revolter could still be hiding right here and there's simply no way to get a fair gunfight against a player in this spot. So if we want to do a solid push, we have to get control of master hallway, which is extremely difficult. This hallway is the main reason teams gravitate towards A site rather than a B. It's simply impossible to fully counter a player playing on killbox. This headpick is too strong and it's just so easy to get to user's advantage. Nading it is practically impossible to do safely and even if you manage to nade it, it's still pretty easy to dodge. I'll give you the most consistent method I found to take this hallway, but even though it's the most consistent I found, it's still not nearly as easy as doing an A push. Start by having a player with a smoke, incendiary and a flash on skylight and have the rest of the team take bedroom. Once you have bedroom and the skylight player made sure he can drop down safely, he's going to drop into the stairs and smoke off the hallway. Then once the smoke is up, he's gonna throw an incendiary to the door so that the killbox player can't get any help and then throw a flash that bounces on the roof but still outside of the smoke so that it doesn't hit you. Then just run out of the smoke and pre-fire killbox. You could still very easily get shot through the smoke before even throwing the incendiary or the revolters might throw a grenade in the smoke, but you're doing a b-push here, so this is the best you'll get. Once you get control of both master hallway and bedroom, you can blow both walls to sight and as long as you're ready for it, kill anyone in this area pretty easily. Then if you throw an incendiary or smoke or hell even just have a guy watch connector, you can get a plant in its cubby to watch from bedroom balcony or just get a safe plant right here. As long as the entire team doesn't run into the revolters one by one, it's pretty easy to win post plant if the EMP actually goes down. Some quick notes is that you should pretty much always stick a player in lobby boxes in case the enemy will try to flank from A site or if the roamer will come up lobby stairs. And also after enough time goes by, you should be careful of the middle floor roamer going up skylight stairs. Now for the revolter side, we can start on bottom floor. On this floor, our main priority should be to stop plan from going down on B site. For that purpose, you need to defend two types of pushes, a fast rush and a storage take. A fast rush includes the enforcer seemingly breaking the gym wall, possibly smoking off the close area and trying to plant the EMP as soon as possible. For this, you can very easily just stick one player in parkour. Parkour is an extremely powerful area that lets you easily get pickers advantage and you can also double pick with a teammate playing from behind the bomb. I'd also recommend that the parkour player have a grenade with him so that he could deny plant without any meaningful risk. However, if your enemies are just that much better than you when it comes to mechanical skill, a set of prop mines on the wall placed like so could also be very effective if you're pretty sure they would go for a fast push. However, they would be more useful when placed somewhere else like skylight stairs or A window. That way you won't have to dedicate a player to watching those areas. Just keep in mind that you could put a proximity there too, however an enforcer could still walk in without triggering it if it's cloaked, so it's not foolproof. However, defending storage is a bit more tricky. If the enemies don't use grenades much, I'd highly recommend keeping someone playing in headpeak. You have a lot of cover and you can stand on this box to give you even more angles to play from. In addition to that, you can very easily get help from a teammate playing in either storage with you or in storage hallway. As a storage player, I'd highly recommend you to also buy a smoke. 
A smoking sword is super useful because of how versatile it is. If you think the enemies are about to push you but you're by yourself, you could smoke off the doorway to delay the enemies and give your team time to rotate. If you hear the enemies arm a grenade, you could smoke off the entrance so you're able to run away safely and then come right back into the same spot. And if you're feeling really fancy and the drone comes in and sees you, or if you've already made contact with the enemies, you could use the smoke to rotate into this corner, which if you lean your head back enough, is enough to provide you more cover than a lot of people think. However, if you lose control of storage, then your only choice is trying to deny platform parkour and fighting storage from side as well as storage hallway. If your side players ha also have a smoke, then they can smoke off the storage wall so you can have a much easier time to night plant, although not an infinite amount of time. That's why, while that wall is smoked off, you need to start rotating a few players over to water, then either to storage hallway or into garage to retake storage. But that's assuming optimal conditions. If your parkour player has an incendiary and a grenade, perhaps he could deny plant for long enough for you to do that. But let's be real, it's unlikely anyone but me would ever buy that much utility over a Vezin. And usually the parkour player will try to overaggress in an attempt to get a few kills rather than buying time for his team. Although this might sometimes be the right play, most of the times you'll just have to learn how to play around it. And the best way to do that is to assume plant is just going to go down and start silently making your way to garage. Ever since they lowered the EMP time from 60 to 45 seconds, I found that you need to start predicting if plant will go down and act accordingly rather than just reacting like it could before. After you make your way upstairs, stand on the edge of main door and lean out. This way, you can check if there's someone standing outside here in order to watch the garage run out without actually triggering the enemy outside message. If you don't see anyone, just keep being silent and go into garage. Keep in mind, someone could still be in this area, so if you still have a grenade, now is the time to use it. However, if you don't, your best bet is just gambling that no one's there and trying to pick off as many people as you can to allow your teammates that are still on site to defuse safely. This is also why getting a plant down on the side is so devastating. Your only choice is gambling that the enemies make a mistake. Next up, for the A side, it's basically about imagining yourself from the enforcer's perspective and thinking what would be the most annoying thing to deal with and just doing that. And usually, as an enforcer, your goal is blowing both walls into sight. And the most annoying thing to deal with is a really good arcade player that gets a lot of help from his team. And also, a roamer flanking around them from stairs, but we'll get to that later. No matter what sort of strategy or utility you want to use, if you're playing on bottom floor and you're not 5 stacking B side, you need to have an arcade player. It's just way too good of a spot not to play there. It's surprisingly hard to throw utility back there, and even if utility gets thrown, you can retreat fairly easily and fight the A hallway or get help from your water player just as easily. However, it's also important that you play your life here. If you die, the enemies will have a much easier time getting control of the walls connecting to A side. So don't overaggress and try to stay alive for as long as possible so your team has time to come over. I've been avoiding roaming entirely up until now because I wanted to put everything related to it in the same section. However, roaming is an integral part of hideout. On bottom floor, from my personal experience, you can get away with two roamers. However, if you do end up having two roamers, one of them has to be ready to retreat back into bottom floor quickly in case of a rush. When you roam, you pretty much have two areas you can choose to focus on and two ways you can choose to play in those areas. Of course, I'm greatly simplifying things here, but as a roamer, the main thing is getting experience. So roaming over and over and over again across several weeks to learn what works in what situation against which opponents. What I'm giving you is just the very basics which you can implement immediately, but you still need the experience to actually learn how to play properly. The two areas you can focus on are garage and winery, and the two ways you can play each one are aggressively or passively. Let's take a look at an aggressive garage focused roam. You can start out the round with a prenade towards the stairs, and then move behind the van and break any drones that come in. Then, after breaking the drones, you could go on top of these boxes and try to go for a kill on an enforcer trying to take a fight with you. And then, after that, you could either smoke yourself off right here and run all the way into back stairs to retreat. Smoke off the main door and run down skylight stairs. You could not smoke at all and just try to run past the enemies. Or, of course, you could just fake going back so you can keep fighting half a minute later when they think you went back. Of course, if you feel like it at work, you could always go for a run out from lobby as well. I recommend equipping yourself with a Marui for that sweet one-shot headshot at this range. And an example of a passive garage focused roam could be starting out the round in kitchen or if the enemies have a really good roaner all the way out in lobby. Then, slowly making your way back into garage and trying to either catch the enemies off guard before they blow the hatch or wait for them to blow up the hatch and follow up behind them. Which one you want to do is your call and depends on your team's game plan. 
And an example of an aggressive winery focused roam could be starting out in theater, which unless the enemies decide to start out fully in winery, this is probably their next most common entry point, and trying to catch an enemy while he's vaulting into this window. If you line this box up with a window in such a way that the box fully hides the window, the enemies won't be able to see it all from outside, but when they vault in their head will be visible. Keep in mind this works both ways, and they could be grappled on the window too. Then, after getting a kill in theater, or possibly in lobby, you could try to go downstairs and run back into sight. Although, if you want to retreat at this point, it's much better to make your way to laundry, run out, and then come back through storage. Because if you want to go downstairs, you risk both getting picked while moving forwards, and an enemy shooting you from the window. And if you want to go down from skylight stairs, you risk an enemy predicting that and shooting you down from skylight, or someone rotating over to main door and shooting you from there. And an example of a binary focused passive roam could be starting out the round somewhere on one of the middle floor sites, or even top floor if you want to be extra safe, and then slowly making your way down and trying to flank the enemies from a stairs when they're least ready for you. To save time, this will be the last time I explain the basis of roaming, since the basics stay the same through every floor on this map. On middle floor, I'd recommend for the majority of teams to have a garage focused defense plan. That's because a garage push is much more common than an A push. However, it also requires much more mechanical skill. When you're defending garage, first off, there's no harm done in pre-firing this spot after the door gets broken. Seriously, this is probably the easiest pre-fire kill to get in the entire game. I also personally really like abusing this box at the back of garage, since the height advantage is really disorienting to deal with as an enforcer. Just make sure that if you have someone on top of these boxes, that the person playing with you in workbench is looking directly into the wall. That's because if you end up getting flashed, the workbench player could quickly peek out and deny entry right after the flash so that the enemies don't get the timing to just walk in. You also need to be extremely careful with the main door, because it does have vision in the garage. You could put a door blocker there to block vision, but that's only temporary until the enemies break it. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. You could put the door blocker there as bait, and then play close to the main door and wait for your opponent to start shooting at the door blocker. Then, once you think he's close to running out of bullets, you can peek out main door when he's not ready for it. Or alternatively, if you play workbench, you can transition to playing further back so that he won't be visible to main door, but you can still peek outside. I should also mention that just running past the main door player usually isn't too much of a problem either. Especially if you incorporate Vcrouch. That's because this is a much longer range than most players are used to, and because of the current Vezen meta, chances are you wouldn't get one shot headshot anyway, so you could just survive it and then heal back up. Also, you need some sort of way to protect laundry. My preferred method is just buying two trips and placing them like so. Keep in mind, if you place them like this, they'll hit the enemies no matter what, but they're fairly easy to destroy. If you place them super close to the window like this, they'll just go right over them. And if you place them too close to the structure, then they'll hit them if they vault in, but they'll jump over them if they swing in. I'd also recommend having a player on site be ready to wallbang at any time once he hears someone go in. Because why not? Just make sure that if you lose garage control, you go somewhere that's not backside. Most of the time, backside is the easiest place to nade after the enemies have garage and laundry control. However, depending on the enemy's playstyle, economy and earlier utility usage in the round, they might not have a grenade to use for backside or they just might not throw one there. In which case, staying backside is a good choice. Speaking of losing garage control, when that happens, your main goal should be to play numbers. Send one person around into theater and make sure the enemies can't just rotate into a site. This is usually fine because you can extremely easily get peekers advantage when playing here. Just make sure you're not visible to the window while peeking, and keep in mind the enemies aren't trapped, and depending on how much time is left on the clock, they could go anywhere. Then, your site players should try to peek as little as possible unless they're sure that they can get a kill. As an enforcer, the reason you want to blow both walls into sight is so you can get vision into it and take favorable gunfights, as well as limit your opponent's safe space where they have cover. But if all of your players just stay passive without peeking, the enforcers can't take any gunfights and are forced to take a risk. Also, if you have some smokes, you could smoke off the garage wall as it gets blown, that way your team can focus solely on laundry. And you can even try to retake control of it, just keep in mind that someone could still be on the window. Otherwise, if you struggle with your roamer not having enough time to come over, you can buy two smokes and smoke off both walls to buy time for him. For defending a side, from my experience, enforcers don't usually have enough resources to take lobby, theater and piano control. That's why most teams would try to focus most of their attention on one area. Namely, top and bottom lobby or piano and theater. So the best way to defend A is to keep control of the areas that the enforcers aren't focusing on taking and letting them waste their utility. So let's say the enemies want to take piano and theater. 
Show some resistance over there by breaking their drones and using incendiary or smokes. Then just let them take control of it and make your way into lobby with one or two players while keeping the rest on site. This way they have a hard time getting plant down and you can force favorable gunfights by not over swinging out of cover and making sure to keep peekers advantage. It works the other way around too. If the enemies are focusing on taking lobby, you can keep piano and theater control and easily deny plant. Also, if the enemies blow hatch, this is an extremely good angle you can use to fight them as long as theater is clear. On this floor, unless you're playing against an extremely slow team that likes pushing from different floors, you should have one roamer at most, and that roamer could stay on top floor to deny hatch so that the enforcers can't nade connector as easily, or if they're pushing lobby, he can slowly go behind them and flank. Or he could go bottom floor and go for a runout for anyone in laundry, or if the enemies choose to go theater, he could make his way behind them up these stairs. Of course, even though I didn't mention them, prenades are still great against the majority of teams since it's extremely uncommon to just go straight in without waiting for a drone first. And on this floor, you don't really need to save them in order to deny plant. Top floor is a very small and simple floor. There's A site, which is attacked from lobby, and B site, which is attacked from master hallway and bedroom. Let's start with A site. Our first goal should be to delay the enforcer's lobby control for as long as we can. When you're fighting a good team, or against a team with a good IGL, there will probably be someone on each and every entrance of lobby, and very likely someone on the hatch. This means there isn't really a single spot we can play in without being visible to some other angle. That's why a lot of teams simply give up lobby control and focus more on defending the site itself. However, that doesn't mean delaying a push is impossible. One of my favorite things to do is to smoke off this window as soon as the round starts. Then you can vault up this box and fight lobby balcony from a very good angle. From my experience, this is fairly safe to do, but be careful against a really aggressive team since someone could drop down the hatch and shoot you from behind. You could also have a roamer on middle floor aggressively fight the enemies. And if you stand out of the A hallway, you can get this really good wallbang. Just keep in mind it works both ways. After we delayed lobby for as long as we can, now it's time to defend the site itself. Personally, I like to have a second smoke grenade to smoke off the wall to delay the enemies for even longer. But regardless of whether or not you have this smoke, you should try to have a player in every corner of the site. One in toilet, one in connector slash showers, and one in the head peak, possibly utilizing this lean to look into the doorway. Just don't use it if you play VRML because it's banned there now. Go ahead in rank though. Then you need to put all of your effort towards trying to make sure that the plant will not go down. If a plant goes down on A site, the enemy team has access to it from the stairs, balcony and outside this window, which is just extremely hard to retake, similar to bottom floor B site. So your top priority should be to deny plant from going down. If you have grenades, which I would highly recommend buy two of them on this floor, even if you have to sacrifice a gun for it, then you can nade as soon as the enemies tap EMP like so. And when you're out of nades, you pretty much need to take a risk and pick the planter either one by one, just trying to delay it for as long as possible, or all at once, trying to go for an aggressive play and wiping your enemies. If you have a roamer in middle floor who stayed passive, then the best time for him to start moving out is right before they blow the wall, since that's when most people's focus is being shifted to the A site itself. The last two things you need to worry about is a flanker from B site and someone grappled on the A window. Personally, I like to put drop mines on the window so that you won't have to dedicate a player to it. However, if you don't have them, or you want to put them somewhere else, someone can swing the window from connector with Pika's advantage. As long as he's ready for it. Also, if you're pretty sure someone will be on the window, you can run out of winery like so to catch them by surprise. Just keep in mind, it takes a lot of time and it's not 100% safe to get back up to top floor. And the second thing you need to be worried about is a flanker coming from B site and into connector. Even if you have proximities, an enforcer could always be cloaked and just go past them. But as long as you periodically check on Nectar, you should be fine, since they'll be slowly crouching anyway. And if they aren't, then you hear them make noise and you could hear it coming. Also, one last thing, if you know that the enemies have a flank watch from the roof, you could always make it to bedroom like so, and then just run past the hatch guy. B site is fairly simple as well. Master hallway is incredibly easy to defend, just have one player on killbox and if he needs help you can rotate someone over to help him. Also putting a proxy in master hallway makes this even easier. Killbox is an incredibly powerful spot, you have a ton of cover and you can get peekers advantage and a head peek whenever you want. Even if the entire enforcer team goes master hallway, a single good killbox player is enough to dismantle that entire push. Just keep in mind that you might get smoked off and in that case shooting blindly it is. Also, as a quick side note, make sure that even if you have a proximity, you still periodically peek master hallway. 
That's because a cloaked enemy could just crouch walk all the way up and that would just be awkward. And as for bedroom, well, bedroom is really hard to fight in due to the fact that you can get picked from three different angles, bench, window, and the hatch, so most of the time I wouldn't put any players there myself. Rather, I would just put a proxy on the window and start wallbanging the second it goes off. You could also smoke off the bedroom wall once it gets blown to delay the push so that your roamer could make his way back up. But if you really want to fight bedroom, then buy a smoke grenade, vault a bed, go to the very very edge of it and as soon as the round starts smoke off right here and max lean as wide as you can to see out the window from a weird angle, then fight for as long as the enemies don't break this door or the smoke fades out. Then once you need to come back, just make a break for it into B-side through the smoke. Okay, that's every main point I wanted to go over. Uh, here's some things I completely forgot to include, but I just couldn't be bothered to edit them in since the video is already done. If you're a revolter on bottom floor and you feel like the enemies are gonna push winery, you can go to this window in lobby and lean out. You can wallbang these blue boxes things in middle floor B site. Uh, this goes both ways. You can vault on this thing as a defender. Pretty good angle, just hard to retreat if all the walls are broken. You can't wallbang the workbench in garage anymore. And lastly, if it's top floor and you're an enforcer, it's really powerful to just start grappled on this window and then swing it. 